What's up sellers and welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm sharing with you my thoughts and kind of my ideas and strategy for selling on Amazon in Q4 in 2020. All right, welcome back. Like I said, we're gonna be going over sort of just my thoughts in this video as far as selling on Amazon as a new or an intermediate seller with not a ton of inventory and how you can work towards keeping a little bit more money in your pocket. First off though, I wanna shout out to my friend Ricky Gutierrez and the Tech Buds Solutions team for this awesome shirt uh, in maroon with entrepreneur stitched across the front, super dope shirt. Thank you to them for this item. Uh, I love it, it's super comfortable, and uh, I feel like it describes my uh, attitude, at least. Uh, it describes my attitude well. Before we jump into the main topic of this video, I wanna go and do a motivation moment. So, I bring to you Motivation Moment. The most important step we're ever taking in life is to our next one. A lot of us get our feet stuck in concrete. We get our feet stuck in concrete because we're afraid to make enemies. We're afraid to speak what's on our mind. We're afraid of being in that group of people. And when you walk away, we're afraid of what they might say behind your back. All that fear clouds your brain, clouds your thinking. One thing in life, you're going to always have haters. Embrace them. If you can walk on water, trust me, your haters will say you can walk on water because you can't swim. Learn one thing, shut the noise out. Embrace the fact that people don't like you. It means you're doing something right. Stay hard, stay in the fight. All right, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that got your mind working and ready to crush whatever's coming down the road in your path. Uh, and just kind of get out there and get moving. Uh, motivation doesn't work for everybody, but it does for me. Uh, I love motivational speeches and talks and Instagram posts, and that just really, really helps me. And so hopefully it'll help some of you out there. If it didn't help you, um, well, hopefully this next segment of this video will, which is the reason why we're here to talk about what you can be doing in Q4 of 2020 as an Amazon seller in order to keep more money in your pocket. Now, my thoughts here are not necessarily for big time, full time Amazon sellers with tens of thousands of products, because uh, frankly, what I'm about to talk about uh, would just be ludicrous to think that a seller with that kind of volume could do this. During Q4, if you're a new seller, if you've got less than maybe 500 items in your Amazon store, I would strongly suggest merchant fulfilling items for a few simple reasons. So Amazon sent out an email recently uh, or notification that they were gonna start tightening the reins for Q4 in regards to fulfillment center fees, as well as the amount of allowable space and your IPI, which is your inventory performance index number. So basically if that number is below, I believe 500, then you are gonna be limited on the amount of storage space that you are allowed to use within the fulfillment center. This stinks. If you've got tens of thousands of items or even maybe a couple thousand items and you are below that threshold, you cannot be holding your inventory in the fulfillment center. They will either charge you extra or they'll ship stuff back to you. And so what you really wanna be focusing on either raising your IPI number, which I tried for a long time and it just was not moving. Um, you have to be a dynamite seller selling all of your stuff all the time. Like there's no room to not sell stuff or for stuff to sit around for a month. You've got to be hammering away at your sales in order to get to that point where you can raise your IPI number. So if your IPI number is low, if it's beyond the threshold of what Amazon allows, you're going to be hit with a limited storage amount within the fulfillment center and or they're going to charge you more to hold your items at the fulfillment center. Both of these things are going to end up eating into your profit margins. And so I'm here to tell you how I, if I were in that situation, would move away from losing profit because ultimately the whole purpose of a business, having a business, running a business, even wanting to do business, is to make money. If you are in business or you have a business or you want to start a business and your main objective is not profit, meaning like you go into business for profit. I'm extremely profitable. If you want to go into business with the main objective of helping people and supplying, you know, goodwill to the world, that's a non-profit. Uh, but business is all about 
profit. It's all about revenue, bringing in revenue and converting that to profit and growing the business. So if you have these limitations on your Amazon account and you're not going to be wide open for the fourth quarter of 2020, I highly recommend that you look into merchant fulfilling your items. Now you can recall items home and Amazon will more than gladly ship them home and they'll be back to your house or your office or your warehouse within a few weeks. You can get them set up for merchant fulfillment and you'll be on a roll. I wrote a couple pros and cons down to kind of help you understand where this is coming from and why I'm thinking like this. And the first pro that I have for merchant fulfilling your items is that you would keep more money, more profit in your pocket. Simply put, you wouldn't be charged FBA fees, the shipping fees to the fulfillment center, uh, the storage fees and all the other fees that go along with the selling fees and all that stuff. You would simply be charged your $40 seller membership fee to Amazon in order to sell on the platform and then 15%. The only other fee that would come out of that or charge would be shipping to the customer. So let's say books, for instance, uh, let's say you have 50 pounds of books and you're going to spend $25 shipping them into the fulfillment center. Not all of them are going to sell. So you're going to incur some storage fees and then when they do sell Amazon's going to take their 15% plus their FBA fees which can range anywhere from five to eight to ten dollars per book uh, you avoid paying a bunch of fees what are the cons to this what is the direct correlation con to this we have our pros and our cons uh, the con would be that you would have to fulfill the order you would have to do the work now, if you're a full-time self-employed entrepreneur and you're doing the work from home anyways, it's not that hard to fulfill some orders. Uh, you get a notification you sold something, you pull that item, you pack it, you ship it, and it's done. It's very, very simple. I've been able to handle upwards of 25, 30 orders with absolute zero problem on my own, no issues. If you have a couple thousand items that you are selling via Fulfilled by Merchant on Amazon, you could easily sell and manage those shipments from home, from your warehouse, from your office, and what have you. Uh, if you have a day job, if you're not able to do this, then obviously those are some circumstances that you have to work around and you have to uh, think through. However, I think if you are a stay-at-home entrepreneur or you work for yourself, this is definitely a smart way to go, at least through Q4. Now, once Q1 2021 comes, then things die down, the fees to store are not so high, and they relax a little bit on how much space is available at the fulfillment centers. At that point, maybe throw yourself back into the fulfillment center for them to be FBA, fulfilled by Amazon, so that uh, you can have less work to do. But hey, it's Q4, regardless of whether you're selling on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Amazon, uh, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, wherever you're selling, it's Q4, people are here to buy. They want to buy. Uh, so it is our busy season and we should be grateful to be blessed to be able to do that. The second pro, and I think this far outweighs the others, is that you would have the advantage over prime offers when it comes to non-prime customers. And what I mean by that is 60% uh, of households in America have a prime membership, which means 40% do not. So four out of every 10 customers on Amazon do not have a prime membership, which means that if they're buying something via FBA fulfilled by Amazon and they don't have a prime membership, they are paying extra in shipping. However, they can simply click the view items sold by other sellers and they can come across your listing where you may be selling it at the same price with free shipping. And even after all of the fees and everything are accounted for, you will still make more profit because you are not being charged FBA fees, storage fees, shipping fees to the fulfillment center, you would end up making slightly more money by sending these things free shipping to the customer via fulfilled by merchant or merchant fulfilled. Now the con to this side, uh, storage may be tight. If you live in an apartment or you don't have a garage or you uh, have limited space, it could be very difficult for you to merchant fulfill your items uh, simply because things just take space, right? Matter takes space. And if you don't have that space available in order to store your items, that could put you up a creek. And then finally, probably the worst part of merchant fulfilling in my experience is having to handle returns. Now, there's nothing innately wrong with it. Um, people are going to send stuff back regardless of where you sell at. Uh, unless it's Facebook Marketplace, where it's kind of like one and done, pretty much anywhere that you sell and ship, you're going to have returns. One of the amazing things about Fulfilled by Amazon is that they handle the returns. They handle receiving the item back. They handle giving the refunds. That's a dream come true. However, as Merchant Fulfilled, you have to handle those things. Now, this is not difficult. 
you know, the customer sends the item back to you. Once you receive it, you process the return and refund them their money and it's all said and done. Then you just list that item back for sale merchant fulfilled and you're good to go. I've noticed that personally as a merchant fulfilled seller, I have not had a ton of returns. That being said, uh, depending on what you're putting out and the way that you list your items, you could have more or less returns than me. Now, if you are familiar with my channel, if you are familiar with my story, I did get banned on Amazon a few months back for drop shipping on Amazon and I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's highly against the rules on Amazon and so uh, I got kicked off. So I'm currently not selling on Amazon in the stages of getting my account back from Amazon so that I can sell. My goal and my, I guess my dream is to get my account reinstated prior to Q4 so that I can swoop through those bookstores, those thrift stores, and scoop up some profit in order to list them merchant fulfilled so that I can sell them on Amazon and make the money during Q4. People are ready to spend money in Q4. And so why not take advantage of it? Why not jump on the train, get your items listed from your home, from your office, from your warehouse and make sales, make profit and get the money. I hope this video brought value to you and uh, some perspective on how you can sell in Q4 of 2020 on Amazon in order to make more profit. If you like this video and it brought value to you, be sure to leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing. And as always, keep selling, get the bag, and I'll see you on the next video.